Good evening. Welcome to Code Portal, sponsored by Light Language University and Circle Insights. I'm Jeannie Mills, the Assistant Dean of Light Language University. I'm here tonight with Anna Noyce, the founder of Light Language University and Circle Insights. The topic for tonight's episode is karma. But before we start, I'd like to read the Light Language University mission statements. Our, state, our mission is to inspire others who are awakening and to aid in the imminent growth of the conscious awareness of being multidimensional. Hello, Anna. How are you tonight? Wonderful. We're about the topic. <laughs> Me too. Um, I would like to, if you don't mind, I'd like to start off by saying a little bit about karma, kind of like to let everybody know what it is. Um, to me, what karma is, is it's the number one golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. This backs, goes all the way back to, it's in the Bible, it's in Hinduism, Buddhism, all different kinds of things. And what it is, is that whatever you throw out, if it's negative energy, you're, it's going to come back to you stronger. And the same thing is that if you throw out positive energy, the universe sends that back stronger to you. Now, it may not be in this lifetime. It might not be imminent, but it will happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about learning. Yes, definitely. Um I, I did do a little bit of research and it said that the one thing that I found was the Hinduism and Buddhism, that they say that the sum of a person's actions in this and previous states of existence viewed as deciding their fate in future existences. So whenever you see that person, you think, how, how can they do these things and yet all this stuff comes to them. Why are, why are they, why, how, you know, I try to be good and this doesn't happen to me. Well, that's why. <laughs> so true. <laughs> I, I love, and, and thank you for starting us off with that because yes, um, I think it's real important to recognize that we all know about, we all want to talk about um, bringing things into our life, bringing abundance into our life, but we're also bringing in karma into our life and something we need to think about a little bit stronger. Okay. Um, now, some people have sent in some, some questions, so if we can go ahead and get started on those. The okay. first one is, can you clear all your karma in one lifetime? For some people, yes. For some people, no. It just depends on where you are and how you're learning and what kind of karma that you're bringing in. We also know that karma um, is not always bad. And I think we have this idea that karma is bad. We need to, to keep ourselves, um, I guess, uh, focused <laughs> and try to stay above that heart line, which is where we want to go. But there's a lot of good things that we learn from karma. You can do something amazing and have that. And I think what you mentioned and what we teach at the Light Language University is really important, that whatever you put out in the universe comes back to you seven times stronger. Mm -hmm. And can I say something real quick? Um, at Light Language University, one of the very first things that we learn about in Light Language 101 workshop is about the tone scale. You mentioned about the tone scale, so we always have to go through that. It's that there's two emotions that exist in the universe. There's unconditional love at the top and fear at the bottom. And your heart line is the one that's in the middle. So it's, it's kind of up to you if you want to keep your vibration, vibrational level up above or below. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So, and that's, that's, it's important to, to know that um, it just depends on where you are on that heart line. Karma, again, can be good and it doesn't always have to be bad. So we don't have to look at it as a negative thing. And I think a lot of people do see it as negative. Yeah. Cause that's what we always say. Oh, karma, karma will get you. <laughs> But yeah, karma can be good. But we could also say, oh, karma will get you. Yay. Because <laughs> I've done amazing things, right? <laughs> exactly. 
another question is why does karma exist it makes the world interesting it makes our lives interesting and there's so much to learn so without karma without these lessons coming into our lives we're not going to have these incredible experiences and we've come to 3d we've lowered our frequencies our vibrations to have that 3d experience so karma makes it fun now are we going to finish this? I, I, I'm going to throw something in because I love that you're going into the light language, some of the teachings, because it's true. What about past, present, future, and parallel lives are all participating in? So if we do something below the heart line, how does that affect the other lifetimes that are happening at this moment? When we look at the monad, which we've talked about in other uh, right. code portals. Or if we do something positive, how does that affect the other parts of ourselves? Because it's all part of the same spirit. It's right. all one. Yeah. That's good. Makes it interesting, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Are diseases and emotional disorders linked to karma? Some are and some aren't. Some of them are contract. And I think this is where we kind of blur the lines because we want to put everything compartmentalized in a compartment, right? But really, we're looking at uh, something like, what is it? Uh, contracts, soul contracts, or soul agreements. So we also learn in 101 that sometimes we step into a soul agreement or we create a contract and it doesn't necessarily have to be karma. Or we may create the karma because you really have to look at it. And especially if you're working with a client and you have someone in front of you, you need to look, is it karma? Is this a soul contract? Is this a soul agreement that, that they've created to have that experience at that moment? Yes, absolutely. Um, and how does light language play a part of karma in our lives? How does light language play a part? Well, because everything that we put out in the world, we um, we attract or we we participate in. So it's not just in the physical. It's also in the spiritual. We know our light language is our spiritual essence of us. And so it goes beyond because 30 percent of our spirit, our soul is in the physical body. Our soul is in the physical body. The other 70 percent is hanging outside. So whatever we're participating with, our feeling that cause and effect on those four levels of consciousness. Do you remember the four levels of consciousness? It all affects. It's not just one thing. Karma is a part of, of all that we've been talking about. The monad, the soul agreements, the soul contracts, the, um, the four levels of consciousness, how we participate. All of that plays a part of what we're doing in this lifetime. And I want to bring up one thing. The hermetic laws is cause and effect. So we study the hermetic laws in 101. So what we throw out comes back. So that's one of our hermetic laws that we, we do learn about. Yes. Um, can we take on other people's karma? I'm sorry, can we what? take on other people's karma. Yes. Yes, we can. And we can create more karma if we want. And so this is interesting. When we come into this, and here's another piece of it. I'm going to, we're going to kind of piece it together. But when you come into the world and you come into a family and you choose your, your family members and you choose your DNA, you also carry those lines. So a lot of people at this time, we're, we're moving from the Piscean age into the Aquarian age where everybody's everybody's stuff is coming out all of the past present future all of that's kind of merging together and expanding into this we call it the ascension part because we're always ascending and what happens is as we ascend we start to look at our stuff now some of it is what we've done in this lifetime some of it's what we have in other lifetimes some of it's what we're participating in other lifetimes that comes up and we, we don't even know that we're that's a part of it and we also have our ancestors karma that we're also purging at this time and as we start to look at it and if you look at the world right now it's kind of interesting 
because right a few years after we went into the Aquarian age, we started shifting and now everything's everybody's stuff is coming out and everybody's having to look at it and how we participate and how we look at it is through our emotions. Our emotions are the triggers, but they're also what we gauge everything. So if we can, we can turn the emotions from being the trigger. We can look at the emotion and we can say, I'm angry about this, the situation. How do I work through it? How do I change what's happening? And how do I learn this lesson? Because if we don't learn that lesson, guess what happens? It continues to grow. Or we continue to have more parts of that onion that keeps showing itself. And we're like, really? Again? <laughs> Well, and, and we did do a light code portal previously um, about past lives and karma and about how they they interact. And so if you get a chance, go back and look at that. So. It's a good reminder. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, another question. Can karma come from other lifetimes? And if it does, why? Which is kind of. We kind of answer that. <laughs> yes. And Jeannie, do you want to just recap on that very quickly? Sure. Absolutely. Everything that we do, it's basically what we do now sets the precedence of how we are going to be affected in the future lives and in our past lives and in our parallel lives, which you touched on a little bit. Um, it's something that's very difficult to grasp, but come back and watch some of, of Anna's teachings. It's She really knows her stuff. She knows what she's talking about. She leads us. It's amazing. Um, she kind of breaks everything down so that we can understand what it is and how it works and all the different aspects. So thank you, Anna. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> well, does karma shape everything you experience in life? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does. Because we're always learning lessons. And even though it may not be a big lesson, it may be a small lesson that also inter interacts with what, what's happening to our life. So it's really important to kind of look at it, engage where we are. And there's the story that we like to tell in Light Language University about my dad having me sketch the top of the apple, the bottom of the apple, and all the different sides. And so when we talk, and especially uh, the staff, the LOU staff, we're always saying, well, we're looking at it from a different perspective. And then we try to all focus in on that perspective that each one of us is looking at because we all bring in these beautiful pieces. Well, it's the same way about life. And it's the same way about karma. There may be big lessons, there may be small lessons, but all of it kind of works together to create this beautiful experience. Can you change it? Yes, absolutely. You have a choice to change it. The lesson is also something that we create prior to this lifetime. So we're not victims of any of it. We created it. And I also want to say the antagonist in, the, in our lives that play out those parts, because it might be a relationship uh, and we may have the same bad relationship over and over, whether it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, family member, a friend, business, however. But what's happening is we've brought come into that lifetime to learn how to experience that, how to stand and go above that heart line. When you go above the heart line and you hit a certain point, then you walk away from it. It just doesn't affect you anymore. So you just kind of, and once it doesn't affect you, it no longer triggers you. You're, um, you're done with it and you move on. Now, does it stop there? No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. You'll get more lessons in different parts doesn't have to be that lesson it will be something else maybe you you master relationships but you still need to do partnerships and business so you learn that or maybe you master business well you'll still have to do something else with friendships or so there's so much to learn uh, even with the the earth 
even learning about how things around you, because that's all relationship, animals, everything. So we're learning these beautiful parts of how we fit in and how we become unified in that oneness of working together. Thank you. That was really good. Um, okay, so here's a biggie. Doesn't karma teach people to be callous towards others who are suffering? And then that we're going to say this one and Jeannie, this goes again with our apple. So for some people, they may be callous toward others who are suffering because they're coming from that perspective. But there's so many other different ways to look at it. So I guess it just depends on the person's perspective if they're going to be callous or not. And that's a choice. Right. And that also kind of goes into like about how that if what we might judge as a negative experience. Yes. May actually be a positive experience for our particular soul. Exactly. Beautifully said. Exactly. And we look at people who have had um we actually, I know we brought up this before, but I do have um, a person that I know who has cancer and they were diagnosed and three months later, it was almost, it was barely there. And six months later, it's completely gone. And we've talked about this in other podcasts. What's interesting is the person always thought of cancer as a lesson, not as a curse, not as bad karma. <laughs> it was a lesson. And because of that, it was, she was able to release it very quickly. Yeah. And it was really amazing too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to see it firsthand. It was, yeah, it was, it was good. Yes. <laughs> and we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if any of the, the listeners right now want to send in any additional questions and stuff, we would love to hear if you have anything. Um, we do only have one last question. So I'd love to hear from anybody in the audience. Um, our last question is, can a person who really works on themselves and releases all their karma get out of rebirth? So I guess we're asking like if if you've done, if you've worked through all your steps and stuff, then do you have to come back? Do you have to do it again? Yes. Okay. So that's an interesting question. And a lot of people, I'm going to, I'm going to approach it from a different perspective because what a lot of people, again, like karma, we think of it as a negative. We think of being on the planet, being in third dimension as a negative, but the truth is it isn't, it isn't a negative from the soul and the spirit's perspective. It is amazing to be in the 3D world and have those experiences, to have those relationships with each other, to be able to play with the animals or swim in the water or have the physical manifestations around us that we create through the consciousness of, of the collective and oneness and that group and then individual, which is amazing. So I think the question was, can we finish it? Yes, you can finish it. But there's always a choice not to come back. And when we look at dimensions, there's eons of dimensions. This is this is fun, actually. Uh, some people like ice cream. Um, some people, you know, would come back just because they like chocolate, or somebody people like riding horses, or playing with with their dog, or sitting with someone watching a, a sunset. Some of those sunsets, when we look at it, yeah, you can finish it. But you can also create, there's always room to create more. There's always room to expand and always room, room to ascend. So it, I think if we look at this experience as not the end all, we're done, but look at it as an opportunity to, to uh, experience. Yeah, and and you're, that's exactly right. I mean, I don't know if anybody else has been noticing, but the way that that my bedroom is set up. I have like a big, a huge pasture and stuff and then trees at the back and a little forest at the back. And so the last few mornings, like the past week or so, the sunrises have been unbelievable. And like, oh. that's enough in itself to come back for. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
view <laughs> on the sunsets and stuff. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are to hold those grandbabies that you have. Absolutely. Five of them. <laughs> or your babies or your child or your when you're around at the Thanksgiving or Christmas, especially now when we're going through COVID and so many people are you know, people exiting the earth. When you look around the table and you're with the people that you can love, that's a beautiful experience. Yeah. Yeah, definitely things to hold on to. Um and just, we've got a couple minutes, so I, I do, if you don't mind, to, to say about um, another one of our definitions is for light language is light, the li say that again, light language is the language of the divine blueprint of the soul. Mm -hmm. That is so <laughs> profound. Like if it, the first time that you might read it or hear it or something, you might be like, wait, what? And then, like, after you start getting it more and more and more, you start really understanding what that means, the, the gravity of what it is. So, anyway, just wanted to share that. Thank you. <laughs> I, guess, I guess if that's the last question. So, um, first, I guess I'd like to thank Anna for being here tonight. And for all of our listeners for being here and for watching and um, to thank everyone who did send in the questions. We greatly appreciate that. And we've got some upcoming events. Whoops. <laughs> Live. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. Um, next Wednesday, January 26th, we have new to all this class. It's from 7 to 8.30. It's only $35. So if you're kind of wanting to check things out, see what it is, it's not just about the university. It's about anything that you might want to have questions about. Um, then the, our next light code portal is in two weeks. That's February 2nd at 7.30. And that's going to be on Tricksters. That's going to be a fun one. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Um, our weekend workshops that are in February. Um, Light Language University, we do our workshops are on a Saturday and a Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. both days. So you get full two full days. Um, we have one the February 5th and 6th is on Medical Intuitive. Oh, no, excuse me, Light Language 101. Medical Intuitive is on February 12th and 13th. And then Light Language 102 is on February 19th and 20th. So that pretty much sums up what everything is that's coming up in February. Of course, more things will be starting in March. And we hope that you'll be joining us for the next Light Code Portal. And thank you and namaste.